Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day today. It's Daryl here and we've got a new lesson lined up for you guys. We are going to tackle improvisation. Now this really is one of my favorite lessons to teach because there's something really special about sitting down with another musician and trading melodic ideas back and forth or trading solos back and forth without any preparation. Just having those ideas flow from the top of your head out and hopefully creating something interesting or inspiring to listen to. So this lesson is geared specifically towards people who have never improvised before and who are transitioning, you know, between a beginner player and an intermediate player. That sweet spot right in the middle there, I find is the perfect time to start introducing the concept of improvisation. And it's amazing to watch my students, you know, who kind of look at me with a blank stare and say, you just want me to start playing now? I haven't prepared anything. What am I supposed to play to like four lessons later, you know, we're trading solos back and forth. So that's how quickly it can happen. Uh, you know, it's just one of those light bulb moments. Now, the good news is improvisation is a learned skill. So we can sit down and tackle a few of these ideas today to get you guys improvising. One thing I did notice is for a lot of players, this concept of improvisation is really, really foreign and intimidating. The idea that you, you know, have to just think of something and play it uh, can be really daunting. And it's not really taught in, you know, really big spheres of the musical world. You know, I've had students come in from the classical world, from, you know, Royal Conservatory Piano at high levels. None of them even really knew what improvisation was. So it can be really, I don't know, I guess just a foreign concept for a lot of even high level musicians. But today we're going to be focusing on the basics. Let's jump in. Now I know this might sound counterintuitive, but before we can improvise freely, we need to build a foundation and we need to have some techniques that allow us to do so. So today we're gonna to boil it down and hopefully tackle a few simple things to get you guys started. What we're gonna do is anchor ourselves in A minor pentatonic scale. There's three reasons for that. First of all, it only has two strings per note, so it's easy to learn. I'll put it on the screen right now. You can pause the video if you don't know it. This is the scale we're gonna use. Uh, the concepts we're gonna cover you know, apply to any scale on any part of your guitar. Um, there's five forms that take you from the lowest note to the highest note. We're just gonna start on form one. Secondly, it's in the middle of the guitar, so very easy to play. And thirdly, there's no sharps or flats in this key, in the key of A minor. And in pentatonic uh, specifically, we're just gonna be using A, C, D, E, G those notes over and over again. So that's why we're using the pentatonic scale. I find it's really easy for people to learn. Uh, so if you don't know it, learn it now because this is the scale we're gonna be using. Now, if we take our pentatonic scale and play it to a backing track, it sounds like this. So you guys can hear the notes of the scale go perfectly with the backing track. I will link to the backing track so you guys can practice along uh, to it as well because I think it is a good one for improvisation. Uh, the tempo is nice and slow and it works with our A minor scale. So you guys could hear all those notes, you know, work together, but it wasn't very inspiring. It was just kind of like, oh, you played through a scale and you went back. Well, that's not, you know, too creative. So let's look at five things that we can do to take this scale um, which is really, you know, fairly easy to play and to break it up so that it sounds musical and it gives us some tools to improvise. So here are my five techniques that I use to teach uh, to help students improvise. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to repeat some notes. We're going to vary the tempo. We're going to change directions. We're going to skip strings and we're going to add articulation. All right, so let's jump into technique number one, which is simply repeating notes. Now, this is exactly what it sounds like. We're just gonna take the scale and play some notes more than others. Now, you guys can choose which notes you wanna repeat and how many times you wanna play them, but this is the first step towards improvisation, and it could sound something like this. Let's cue up that backing track again. So you guys can hear how that kind of just breaks up the scale in, you know, just a really basic way. Instead of just playing through, you can kind of add a little push and pull by, you know, repeating some of those notes. So that's technique number one. Now, technique number two is varying the tempo, which means we're going to hold some notes longer and play some notes shorter. So when we combine that with our first technique, which was repeating notes, that means we can play notes more than once and we can play some notes slow and some notes fast. So again, we're going to use the scale just using those techniques. Um, here we go. Let's play with that backing track again. So 
So already, you know, we can sort of add some musical interest to that. So just by repeating notes, varying the tempo. Now onto technique number three, and where things really get interesting is changing directions. Up to this point, we've been starting on the sixth string, going down to first string, back up to sixth string. Well, here we can change directions whenever we feel like it. If I want to do it after three notes, great, I can go back to the sixth string. Or if I'm on my first string and I want to go down to second string or third string and then back to first string, great. So now we start to have a little bit more melodic freedom to go back and forth. So again, we're going to combine all three techniques together. Let's play with that backing track. So again, you can see how that really breaks up your basic scale into smaller chunks, just changing directions back and forth and starts to create, you know, something a little bit more interesting. Now, technique number four is skipping strings. This can be a little bit intimidating because you're not sure, you know, quite where to jump to, but all the notes on these scales are safe notes. They're all going to be fine. They're going to sound okay. So we just, you know, experiment. That's part of improvisation. Now, I don't mean just, you know, kind of one note at a time jumping everywhere, you know, although that can be interesting for a fill or whatever. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, combining our previous techniques into a musical idea and then going to a different part of the scale and doing another musical idea. So sort of mini phrases, although we'll talk about phrases in a second. Uh, here's what I mean. Let's uh, cue up that backing track again. So you guys could sort of see how I would do a little idea in the middle and then maybe up high and then down low kind of thing. And that's, you know, totally fine. Just find a little pattern like that to repeat over and over again. Do something on your middle two strings, then your upper two strings, then your lower two strings, just to practice kind of moving in a basic way around that scale. Now, technique number five is articulation. And this is where things really just blow wide open and the sky is the limit. Um, so we're talking about things like slides, bends, uh, vibrato, legato, staccato, hammer-ons, pull-offs, uh, dynamics, louds and softs. Um, this is where things kind of go from beginner to definitely intermediate slash advanced. Um, so I think we're just going to hone those down. Each one of those topics really deserves their own lesson. But I think let's just focus on playing some slides. So let's start and just play our pentatonics back and forth, the two notes um, on each string as slides, like this. Just ascending and descending, just using slides. That way when you know you need to do something interesting, you can slide into a note. Just that, practicing the scale using slides will be awesome. Now once a student has a handle on slides, which I find you know one of the more easier techniques to teach, then we'll do the first bend. And the first bend I like to teach is the D note. This is seventh fret on third string, bending up a full tone. Sounds like this. Just a really classic bend. Um, so I usually use you know a few fingers to support the bend in case I do want to add some vibrato at the top of the bend like you were hearing. But just a straight band sounds great uh, in amongst a pentatonic solo.
you guys have been diligently practicing maybe the first three techniques or maybe even the first four techniques and you're like, well, it doesn't quite sound like ideas. It still sounds maybe too mechanical or something like that. This is where phrasing comes in and this is how I teach it to students when uh, you know they're learning to improvise. We'll take the scale and break it into sets of two. So first and second string, third and fourth string, and then fifth and sixth string. Now each one of those sets has an A, which is a very important tone when we're playing in the key of A minor. Uh, this is our root tone. So I'll encourage them to start a phrase on A and then end on A. So if we take our first two strings here, um, the A is on fifth fret, first string there. Um, and so we'll, I'll say, just play a random phrase, doesn't matter what it is, but start on A and then end on A, you know, using maybe the first three techniques or something like that. And suddenly they're like, okay, oh yeah, I can hear that. And it starts to de develop your ear. Or we'll do the same thing on your inside strings. This is where your root note is, the A. Right, starting on A, ending on A. So that really, you know, helps develop your ear and develop phrasing in just a very basic way. So that's another way that you could kind of incorporate with this whole concept of improvisation. You know, once you have just some of those basic techniques down, then you can start thinking about where is my root note, that A note. Those are such important tones. And we talked about the whole scale basically being, you know, a safe zone. You can play any note on there. It's going to sound good. Um, but the A notes in the key of A on the A scale, um, very important. Those are like kind of like highlight tones. So once you have some of those basic techniques, you can just do what I did, break the scale into sets of two, start on A, end on A, um, and that'll kind of smooth out some of the, um, I don't know, the randomness of the solo. Now over the years, this was one of the most requested lessons you guys had. I'm sorry it took so long to get there and sorry I couldn't go into, you know, a little bit more detail, but hopefully these tools will help you guys uh, to kind of move around those scales, get confident doing so. You'll be surprised after like a month or two, sit down with, you know, a sibling, a friend, jam, uh, it doesn't matter if they're a piano player or whatever, you can still do this kind of stuff. It's so rewarding, uh, so much fun. So hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, do so by clicking my face right here. T-shirt store will be up here. Tab store, Patreon, all the other links will be in the video description below. Have yourself a great week. Take care.